how to, how do you practice? You know, as you get deeper into this year, are you finding yourself in that same boat? Yeah, we're in a better position now. We're practicing. You know, we're still. I think last year we were uh, thin on both the scout team and the varsity. Uh, now we got enough for the the scout team guys to give us a look, uh, and uh, we're, we're a little bit more healthier than we've probably been the last couple of weeks. But yeah, we're able to practice. Uh, uh, full go and, and not really having to, to service each other like we did uh, last year. Coach, a little bit of a strange question. If you have players that you have to sit out because of protocol, do you have to notify Tulane and do they have to notify you of that or is it just show up and surprise? Are you talking about did COVID protocols? Yeah. Uh, is there a process for that? or? Yeah. Not that I'm aware of. I will say this, the trainers, I know Steve Walls, our overall head athletic trainer for the athletic department, he's on committees uh, that I think they probably speak weekly and they update each other on things that are going on. But there's nothing between a, a coach or anything of letting anybody know. And knock on wood, we've been really fortunate uh, all year in that area. Xavier Weaver has, you know, when he's been able to play, he's, he's pretty consistent with his ability to make big plays. How have you seen him emerge this year and yeah. what do you see for his future? Yeah, uh, and again, I've, I've been high on him since I got here and what I've seen uh, with him and and um, I've been pleased. He's a very consistent player. I think that's, again, some of the most talented wideouts that I've been around. Yes, they can make, there, there's guys all over the country that can make like that one one-hand catch, but it's the consistency of catching balls <laughs> every time they're thrown to you, right? And just the, the day in the day out of running the routes and the best wideouts that I've been around are very consistent in a lot of areas. And that's what I would say about Weaver. He's very consistent as a route runner. I think uh, for a freshman quarterback, he can he knows exactly that Weaver's going to be in the right spot where he needs to be. And uh, all that's important. So I, I've been pleased uh, with uh, the way that he's uh, played this year. And uh, hopefully he'll have uh, some more big plays in here to finish off the season. With Xavier's ability to catch in anything around him and Timmy's ability to be accurate mm -hmm. that could be a pretty lethal combination down the road. I agree. Uh, we actually saw that, I think, in NC State game. There were many good highlights, but I think that was one of the highlights yeah, uh, right out. there early was uh, Weaver and, and, and Timmy right there. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, that's, you know, our message to our wideouts is, you know, you, you catch the, the uh, you know, routine uh, balls uh, all the time, and you catch the impossible balls most of the time. You know, that's got to be your mindset. If not, you're not going to be a very good wideout. Um, you know, probably one of the best I've ever been around is DeAndre Hopkins. He's six one and a half, but you get it within a 12 foot uh, radius of him, he's going to catch the ball. It's like throwing in a huge garbage dumpster. It's just like you get it in there, he's going to catch it. And Weaver has uh, some of that to him where you get it around him. And he's also very uh, flexible, and you know, I think that's another thing that's a little underrated is guys that can catch the ball in a lot of different body positions. Sometimes you may have guys that can run fast, but they're a little stiff, and they can't get back all those balls. But you watch Weaver, he can really get to just about any ball, and um, been pleased with him. It, ultimately for him, the next big step, and he knows it, is going to be getting stronger and, and putting on some, some muscle just for overall durability. Um, but uh, he, he has a chance to, to be a guy playing on Sundays if he continues to work the way he, he is. You guys are on base to say, and who jumps out at you on offense and defense for Tulane? Yeah, uh, I, you about I, yeah I think their, their backs are, are really talented. Uh, they're running back, they have two running backs that I think are really good that show up, and if those guys get on the edge, uh, they can go. Uh, I think their quarterback, is, you know, he's a freshman. Uh, he's made a lot of plays for them. Again, part of that game at the beginning of the year, watching him against Oklahoma, he was kind of dissecting a lot of uh, nice throws in there. Um, and then defensively, they're very athletic at corner. They really, I think one thing that's helped them the last two weeks defensively is they really went away from playing so much zone coverage to really they're playing a lot of press man in your face. And they have the athleticism to be able to do that. And they played both Central Florida and Tulsa both have really athletic wideouts. And Tulane, they, those guys did a really good job not giving up much. So because they can press those guys and not give up the soft throws, it's allowed them to be able to get in the box and play the run a little bit better. And that's why you see you know, them having success defensively in the last two games. Um, so I think uh, they're, they, they have a lot of athleticism uh, on the outside, both at, at wide out and corner. You guys are on, on pace to set some pretty good records in, in least penalty yards in this program's history. 
Um, so can I blame you if that changes here? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I guess it. But you know, just this team has gone from you know one of the most penalized programs in the country to one of the fewest at this point. You know, is that you put a lot of that on on the culture you guys are trying to build, or is it you know guys just uh, not winning uh, stuff? Uh, we, we still number one, we still have work to do to improve there. Uh, I, I give credit to the players because ultimately they're the ones out there. But it's something we talk about, and, and they know. I think, and again, it's not just coaches talk, and people may get tired of hearing it. But I've lived it. I know one thousand percent it's true. When guys are accountable off the field, they're held accountable in the classroom, study hall, showing up, being where they're supposed to be, being on time. It becomes who you are. It becomes a way of life. It becomes a standard in your life. So you get on the field. You play discipline, you play the standards. But when you get away with that off the field, and maybe that's not as emphasized or guys don't buy into that, then if you're undisciplined off the field, it carries over to the field. So I'm not taking credit for that as a coach. All I can do as a coach is, is present and explain it, but ultimately they have to decide to do that. And, and they have, and I think it's, it's helped us. Uh, again, we haven't got the wins we want, but I think the reason we have optimism is there's been a consistency week by week in the effort and not doing the stupid stuff that sometimes people do when they're having losing seasons. There's been a, a, a little bit of a foundation, I feel like, uh, being built. Do you think the culture is at the point where if you move forward in other seasons, bring in new players and they're not doing what they need to do, the players will police that? More than yeah, I, I think uh, absolutely, and I, I've said that for a while, that the best teams are teams that uh, take ownership of themselves, right? And uh, you know, if, if you have to be the one always kind of going over stuff, then you're not going to be consistent because you can't be everywhere. These guys are in the locker room; uh, they're out with each other, you know, whatever on the weekends. Whenever you know, trying to figure out if, is it okay or do we need to leave, right? So they have to kind of police each other. And, and I've seen that again. I, I give a lot of a credit to again. We haven't had the record we want, but the. The way our guys show up each and every week, I think, is a reflection of the leadership of our bull council, leadership of the seniors, of those guys. Because I, I can present the message, but if, if those guys in the front row, if they don't buy into it, the guys behind them aren't going to buy into it. And so uh, I do think we're starting to see that, and that's why I hope whenever we do bring in some new guys, that we're bringing them into a, a locker room that is uh, a lot further ahead uh, from a culture standpoint and, and uh, standard standpoint, work ethic, all attitude, mindset, and uh, I think that's you know what's going to help us continue to move forward. Do you have any updates on um, the guys that got banged up on Friday, maybe Donovan, the T, or Weaver? Okay, uh, no, uh, I think most of them have been, uh, they, they've all been out there. I think Donovan, Batiste's been good. Uh, Weaver's kind of been where he's been the last couple of weeks. He wasn't 100% last week and can kind of go out there a few, few plays, come back. So hopefully uh, a little bit of uh, time this week will get him back. But um, th those other guys have, have been good. And, and again, we're this late in the year, everybody's beat up. And uh, one, one of the things I complimented our, our team on there at the end, because it was a really physical day and really intense practice. So I was really pleased by that. But, I just made a point, man, I appreciate there's about 12 of you guys out here that got a lot of ailments. It's not an injury that keeps you out, but it's something that doesn't feel 100%. And uh, late in the year, it's easy just to say, you know what, I'm gonna stand over here with the trainer on Tuesday and I'll, I'll be back Wednesday and Thursday. And I'm sitting out there watching practice with all these guys that I know are, are banged up and they're pushing. And I'm going, man, this is great to see. Like, this is so much further ahead than where we were in the past a year ago where everybody was wanting to get a yellow jersey and stand on the sidelines. Um, so you know, I'm really, really pleased. Uh, that, that's a mindset thing. That's not a, that's, that's not a uh, training room or anything. That's a, that's a mindset thing. And our, our guys uh, have done a good job pushing through with that uh, so far. And to that extent, it sounds like they're really evaluating the fact there's only two games left. Yeah. Make the most of them. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they do know. And again, that's, so sometimes I've been a part of, uh, whether I was assistant coach, coordinator, you're kind of going there and, and trying to throw a bunch of stuff out and see what sticks. Like whenever I was talking to our guys on Monday, they, they know, like everybody knows where we are and what we have a chance to do and, and what, we, what we're going to set our sights on. It's very real and genuine and I think that's why they're pushing and working because they know that as well. If they didn't have confidence that we have a chance to go out and have success these last two games, then you wouldn't see what I got, got to see today in Tuesday's practice. The Jimmy Ward touchdown, um, 80 yards, 75 yards after the catch. What, 
What did you think when you reviewed that, and what do you think about where Jimmy is right now? Yeah, uh, it was great to see. Uh, I've seen a lot of those in practice or on the scout field. Um, great to see it happen in the game, and uh, happy to get one of the best teams. I mean, the guy that missed the tackle right there early was probably going to be a top ten draft pick uh, coming up in this draft. Um, so it wasn't like he was doing it against a you know no name group or whatever. So I just again it just kind of built on in my mind that uh, we got a lot of young players that are coming on and playing and, and doing it against a really good schedule. Um, so uh, it's, it's uh, good. Are you surprised at how fast Kevin McLean has improved and where do you think he's most, he's better now than he was at the beginning of the year? Yep. Um, surprised? Um, I mean, honestly, I'm not real surprised because I, we saw some of that in spring ball. We've seen it parts this year. And I guess because I know kind of on the injury front where he was in the middle of the season, now that he's back healthy again. And also you just know as a freshman quarterback, I mean, again, I use the example a lot, but uh, I've been through it two times with talented quarterbacks with Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence. And you know from early in the year to where they are late in the year, you see progress from really good players that, I mean, they only got to see it one time and they learn from that, okay. They may make another mistake. They're going to make other mistakes, but the goal is don't make the same mistake you made last game. So that's where I've seen some good progress from him, and and uh, I think he's uh, playing more confident in our, our team. I mean, I mean, when you have a, a talented player back there, quarterback, I mean, literally, it's fun for me as a coach to watch it every time he has the ball. You're like something good's about to happen, and I, I think the defense probably feels the same way. They're getting their adjustments, and they're up there wanting to watch the video board, you know, to see what what he and the other guys are going to do. Um, so I think that's exciting, and again, um, you know, for us, where we want to eventually be, I mean, we want to we want to have a chance to win our conference, and uh, to do that, you got to have a, a, a older quarterback that's been through some battles, been through some experiences, and and so I think all this uh, opportunity that he's getting right now as we're building this thing is going to pay off for us uh, down the road. All right, appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. All. you. Good luck.